all right guys so welcome to another episode of miss goody's kitchen and this is miss goody's kitchen at home so today i'm going to show you guys how to make a jamaican curry goat so um you're gonna i'm using mrs dash so you guys can see i'm using um garlic powder i'm using some um goya adobo i use this one with the red top because it doesn't have any any msg so um you can look into that i have some all spice or um pimento seeds whatever you call it and i'm gonna use um jamaican choice curry powder all right so what i like to do before i put my curry on is i like to season my goat or my chicken whatever i'm cooking with just some um like all-purpose seasoning okay so i'm just gonna season that up just like that some garlic powder i love using garlic powder all right some onion powder okay just like that okay and then for my curry powder i'm gonna use this measuring spoon so you guys can see um how much i put in make sure the camera can see it all right, let me try to um make sure that I'm being true. So I'm using one. Let me see. Two. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um let's make sure you guys can see it. You can't really see it, but it's alright. I'm going to um put a glove on because but curry gets in your nails so i like to wear gloves when i'm mixing it up but you know you can use your hands but anyway i'm going to just use my hands and massage all of the seasoning into the goat just like that all right and then when i do this this is where i can see okay she the do you need more seasoning? Is this enough seasoning? X, Y, Z. All right. And then if I'm happy with it, then I'll leave it. So, so far, we use two tablespoons. And this is how it looks. It's pretty um covered in seasoning. Me, I like to like add a little bit because, a little bit more because I just like when my curry is curry, curry, curry. Not watery curry, but to each its own. But I'm going to add a little bit more. So I would say about um, three tablespoons. I'm going to put um, how much pounds of curry this is. All right. So in addition to this, I'm going to add some onions. My onions, I'm going to put that in there just like that. I'm going to put um, my, scall my scallion in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this all marinate. And you can make it marinate overnight or you can make it marinate for a couple of hours. It's really up to you. Um, if I'm cooking for a crowd, if I'm doing like a catering, then I'm going to let it marinate overnight because, you know, but, you know, sometimes you come home from work, you don't have time to make it to make it marinate for that long, then you can make it marinate for a couple of hours. But I do um, really recommend that, especially, you know, with curry, that you let it marinate. So this is Jamaican curry. All right. So then I like to just put my piece of scratch button pepper in there. But I don't cook it with it first. I'm going to show you guys that later. And then I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap. And then I'm going to put it in the fridge. And then I'm going to be right back. So anyway, I have my pot on heating. And then I'm going to put some oil in there. Whatever. Um, Put the pot on like a medium high. Um, You could use corn oil. Um vegetable oil if you want to use olive oil you can use olive oil any type of oil with like a low smoking point all right and so um you're gonna wait for the oil to heat up so 
So now I'm gonna add in my curry goat. And now, here's the bowl that I had the curry in. You see I'm picking around the, um, I'm picking around where the onions and seasoning is. So I'm picking around where the um, seasoning is, where the um, onions and stuff is. And I have put, the, I added the pimento seeds too. I'm only going to add in just the meat. So the reason why we um, even put that stuff in here, even though we're not going to put it in the pan initially, is because it adds to the marinating of the um, meat, of the goat meat. the pot is going to look after you add in all your curry goat so you can look and see let me make, put the camera up a little closer so when I zoom in you can see that there's not much liquid or oil in the bottom of the pot it's just a goat soon the meat is going to give up its own juice all right, so now I'm gonna cover my pot with a lid, and then soon you're gonna see that the goat is gonna form its own juices, and after that happens, I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna do with this kettle that I have here. All right, guys, so this is how the goat looks after about like 20 minutes or so. Let me zoom in for you guys. Okay, so you can see that the goat has let off its own. Whee! Bottom out, lenses. It has um, let off its own juices in there. So that's just from letting the goat cook by itself and not adding any type of water. So now what we're going to do with the kettle is we're going to boil water in this and. Um, keep throwing water onto it because because what we want is for the goat to eventually be very tender right now the goat is still tough it's tough we want it to be fork tender so you're going to keep throwing water on it until it's tender so i'm going to show you guys how many times i do that all right guys all right guys so we're back so now i'm going to show you guys the point where we want to add more water so, here you can see that the water from the juices are evaporating. It's evaporating, so now we're going to go ahead and instead of adding on cold water, we're going to go ahead and add in hot water. So I have my, my kettle here, and we're going to just go ahead and add in the hot water. Okay, and how much do you add? You add it enough to just cover. And this is so that you don't have to keep having to wait to bring it up to a boil. The food could just keep cooking consistently. All right, so now that that hot water is in there, it's gonna start to boil soon. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. And now we're gonna cover it. All right, we're back with some progress. I checked the curry goat, and now you can see that it's a little bit more tender. My fork can actually go through it. So that's better. So now I have my kettle here boiling. So now I'm just gonna add um, some more hot water. So it's not really about how long it's taking it's more about um, how many times you have to take for it to get tender I don't know if that makes sense so don't try to cook it and say oh well how long does it take for it to 
how long does it take to boil down? It depends on what kind of stove you're using. It depends on what kind of pot you're using. It depends on how much goat you're cooking. The only thing you really just want to make sure is that it's fork tender. When it's fork tender, when it starts getting a little bit more um, tender, then that's when you know it's getting to where it needs to be. See how I could put my fork through it without trying hard? That's when you know. See? That's when you know that the, the goat is where it wants to be. Because when you cook, when you eat goat, it's not tough, tough, right? So, let's let that cook down. And I think after this water cooks down, then we'll be ready so that we can do the gravy. All right, guys. So, we're back with the final, well, not the final product, but I'm going to show you guys um how the curry goat looks now so now i can just put my fork as soon as i stick my fork in goat comes up so that's how you know how um tender it is and that's what we're looking for so now you can see um that there's like a good water to goat ratio so now i'm gonna use this water that's here and this um juice to make my um gravy so now, do you guys remember the um, onions and scallion and some of the pimento seeds that we had in there? I'm going to put my scotch bonnet pepper to the side. Let me take that out. My little piece of scotch bonnet. Um, anyway, so now we're going to add that in. But I'm also going to add in um, potatoes. So I, added, I had three potatoes. I'm just going to show you guys how... I peeled them, so I'm just going to cut them like so, and then I just cut it in half and put it in a pot. It doesn't have to be too small. Um, if you feel more comfortable over a cutting board, then do it with a cutting board. But I'll just show you guys how I cut them. This was a big potato, so I'm just cutting it down a little bit. And then try to make sure that they're all kind of the same size, see, so that um, they cook evenly. All right. But again, you could do this over a cutting board. So anyway, that's the potatoes. I like a lot of potatoes in my curry, any type of curry I make. So now we're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the potatoes, the onions, and the um, scallion, and the pimento seeds. Add all of that in there. All right. And now we're just gonna mix that in. Okay. So basically, by the time the potatoes finish softening and cooking, that's when you know that everything is going to be done. That's kind of just how I eyeball it. Um, since the curry goat is pretty much already tender, any extra tenderness that's going to be cooking it more is going to be while the potatoes are cooking. All right, so this is good because the potatoes, the starch from the potatoes is going to um, allow the gravy to thicken. So the starch from the potatoes is going to add, allow the gravy to thicken as well. But this is it. So now we're going to cover this and let that thicken. And I'm going to show you guys what I do to make sure the gravy is perfect. I like to add a little bit more curry powder, a little bit more seasoning um, to make sure that it's semi like it. All right, but first we're going to put this on and let it continue cooking. All right, so we're back. That's my hungry child in the back. Anyway, so I want to show you guys where... It's that so you can see the onion is like translucent, it's cooked. The potatoes are coming along. They're not fully, fully cooked, but they're almost there. Um, the gravy is thicker and it's more lighter because of the 
sauce. You see the potatoes? I can stick my finger and it's breaking apart, but it needs to cook a little bit more. It's not there all the yet, all the way yet. All right. So I'm gonna continue to let that cook a little bit more until I, the, the potatoes are pretty much done, and then I'm gonna um, make sure my gravy and sauce and seasoning is right. So basically, um, probably like another 10 minutes, I'm gonna come back, and then I'm gonna do my gravy, and then it'll be done. All right, guys, so we're back. So this is like almost the finished powder. Um, the, the goat is so tender, it's not even funny. Like, it's perfect. The gravy is nice and thick nice and thick rich gravy and the potatoes are almost done they're tender but I like for them to kind of be really really on the tender tender side so now um since we're basically just waiting for the potatoes but I put my pot on a low simmer because I really want all the flavors to come together now I taste for now I'm gonna taste for seasoning okay so let's see It's good. So now is the time where you're gonna add in your scotch piece of your scotch bonnet pepper. You're gonna just add a small piece of that in there, and then um, that's gonna help add more flavor and a little bit of kick. If you don't have scotch bonnet pepper, do not fear. You can use um, like the hot pepper sauce, or you could use the um, what's the other one? I think it's like calypso sauce. And put a little bit of that in there too. Some people use that instead of the scotch bonnet. But anyway, make sure your pot is on low at this point, and you're just going to let it simmer. But this is how the finished product looks. So I'm sure I'm going to show you guys plate up. Um, how long do you keep the scotch bonnet pepper in? I would say maybe 10 minutes. No more than 10 minutes, like eight, 10 minutes, because you're going to start to taste the kick a little bit more. All right, here you have it, Jamaican curry girl. I'm gonna show you guys the final product. 